Today we are going to be talking about predictive processes. This is very relevant for CAPM and PMP aspirants. So let's get started. My name is Kavita Sharma and let's understand what are different ways, what are different processes we should be executing our projects in. The first thing which you see on your screen right now is um, this is called process chart um, taken from PM Box 6th. If you feel this is very complex, don't worry about it. I'm going to simplify it for you. So what we see on the screen is there are uh, process groups here. These are um, five process groups. These are called initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling and closing. What you see, so these are five. What you see here, these are uh, knowledge areas. I'm going to talk about what is knowledge area. These are 10 in total. And what you see here are processes. What are these? These are the ways I can do a particular work so that I can attain a different outcome. Um, each process belongs with a knowledge area and a process group. Total how many processes? 49 processes. Um, so don't worry about complexity of it. Let's understand this first. So first understand uh, process groups. How many process groups? There are five process groups. Um, we initiate a project. What is initiating? Somebody who has money says, I want to attain these goals and let me, let me have somebody, a PM, a leader who can arrange to get these goals um, meet. So um, he is the person who should be planning, who should be doing and he is one head to choke. So PM is assigned to a project and this PM now identify who are the people whom he should be speaking with, creates a plan and then get the things done and then get a sign of that, yes, I have done this work. So this is typically the flow. Um, and this is how process group follows. So initiating is where the senior manager says, let's get started, announces the project to the world. Planning, um, a plan is made. Executing, team does the work. Monitoring and controlling, when the team is doing the work, you want to check at each and every let's say this project is for six months then you want to check every friday how much work is done or every month or bi-weekly whatever is your duration you would try and check whether the work is getting done as per the plan or not so monitoring and controlling is specifically that umbrella process with checkpoints wherein we create reports wherein we track the status of the project and take appropriate corrective or preventive actions Closing is at some point of time, my work is done and my customer, whoever is the customer external or internal, has taken a handover or has taken us. So um, before closing, at some point of time, my customer internal or external has accepted the deliverable, whatever work, whatever goals which we were supposed to get done. Somebody has said, yes, I have got them or you guys have done it. So once you get the acceptance done, then we move into closing and a formal handover, closing of the project is done. Understand process groups are not phases of the project. What is a phase? Um, I'll give you a simple example. A phase could be, let's say I want to roll out 5G to various parts of India. So I may say, okay, let's do a trial phase of um, Delhi for the first uh, iteration. Then after Delhi gets over, I would want to do Mumbai and then so on. So city one, city two, and then so on. So these are all phases of the project. Each phase is planned. Each fa phase is executed. Each phase is monitored and controlled and closed and so on. So understand we're not saying that initiating is a phase. There is no phase like that. In a phase you would have initiating. Uh, a phase is initiated or a phase is said okay let's do Delhi. So initiating. 
planning is when we plan for that particular work to be done executing is when my team does the work in parallel and monitoring and controlling is the umbrella process wherein we check what is happening so um, this is specifically what I'm talking about here so initiating is when somebody says let's do this I have resources project manager is assigned here and in case of after that planning happens and planning and executing goes side by side uh, I may plan for some work to be done in 10 days but then based on the productivity my team can be faster or my team can be slower so based on the input from the executing I may change the days to 20 or maybe 8 so based on all of that my plan keep on changing and every Friday or every Monday I do status reports I ensure that whatever I planned my team is doing that if there is a delta if there is a difference I take note of that and change the plan accordingly and then at some point of time when the acceptance testing happens after the acceptance of all the goals which were signed off we move into closing closing is handover and then closing it in the system so that no money understand each project takes money away from you so um, somewhere in the project systems there is a cost code which is getting associated with the project so in this cost code people are billing their time resources are by resources are bought and then build against this particular cost code or project code so when we close we have to close this cost code as well so that people do not take money from this particular project so that's how closing gonna happen so let me go back and talk about knowledge areas what are different knowledge areas here you can see different knowledge areas different pen so we would see scope management as the knowledge area what is scope management scope management is um, anything to do with scope so how do I collect the requirement how do what do I deliver how do I deliver um, who's gonna sign off on the deliverables um, schedule is when would I deliver so based on the scope you wanna create a schedule and then you say okay are there any different activities or tasks which I need to perform is there any sequence to the activities and so on and I finally create a schedule there could be certain constraint like you cannot do it before this or you need to do it before this particular date and time so we develop the schedule um, and then keep on controlling the schedule I need to be on schedule which is a success parameter of any project we plan for cost how much money it's gonna take IT project for example um, cost is in man hour or person hours so we plan for cost and then we um, keep on controlling cost similarly quality what is the quality expected how do I prevent errors to happen and how do I ensure that there are no errors in the deliverable so all of that is built into quality and we keep on doing the work as per the plan resources what are different resources physical or human resources required we get them and then we keep on controlling in case I need to release testers I release testers in case I need to get developers or different skill set based on all of that communication is um, how do I plan what all do I need to communicate uh, so meetings mails um, any storage system like SharePoint or Wikipedia all of this is part of communication escalation plans are part of communication um, procurement if I need to buy something from outside we buy that and we keep on monitoring our vendors their productivity and so on stakeholder is every time I need to work with people and engage with them so the first thing in the initiating itself I identify I meaning the project manager identify the stakeholders we plan for their engagement we keep on doing that we keep on meeting communicating with them keeping them happy is the job of um, managing stakeholder and since I'm doing the work for the first time if I've been doing the work again and again which is like operations or ops 
then I know what can go wrong. You know, you are doing it again and again. Something goes wrong. You learn from it. You write it somewhere. Those writing are called SOPs or standard operating process, procedures or processes, whatever you name it. But in case of projects, we are doing it for the first time. What is the definition of a project? A project has a start date, has an end date, and it delivers something unique at the end. So anything which you do for the first time has a lot of probability of a lot of things going wrong. So there are a whole lot of risk. What is a risk? Anything which can go wrong. So um, a good project, uh, project manager going to identify the risk and ensure that risks are uh, analyzed, responses are planned. And um, as we are doing the project, as we are managing the project, the risks are, new risks are identified, older risks are closed and so on. So that's all is risk management knowledge area. Now, um, we have learned all of this, but what I didn't touch upon is something called integration management. What is integration management? You as a project manager or I as a project manager, I don't think about, you know, today I'm going to be doing only schedule or only cost. There are instances wherein, um, I'll take an example. Let's say there is a person who fell sick, 14 days of vacation. Now, this guy is really, really important to your project. So um, now you're going to be looking at schedule. You're going to say, okay, this guy is not here. Should I push this work to some other phase? Or should I get somebody else to replace this particular person? Or... Um, should we talk to the customer and ask them what are their inputs? So you looking at all of this, see, you are working with stakeholders here. You are also working with schedule changing. You are thinking about changing the schedule. Um, if you are thinking about hiring somebody from outside um, or getting a contractor from outside, we're looking at cost, we're looking at procurement as well. So there are so many things which we look at when we deal with any kind of issue or any kind of planning in my project. So integration, as the name suggests, is integrating or unifying all the knowledge areas, thinking as the project as a whole and making a decision which is right for the project. So um, most of the processes are very important in integration management. The um, integration is project as a whole. Uh, so the, the person who has sponsored the project, person who has money, initiate the project in something called develop project charter. That's the process wherein this guy says or announces to the world that this project now exists in this company and I've, I'm the one who's funding it. And this is the guy who is the PM of this particular project. So develop project charter basically is announcing to the world that this particular project exists. Um, develop project management plan, all of these plans, you know, schedule, cost, blah, blah, blah. There is an integrated plan which I developed. My team keeps on doing the work. I manage with my team. I tell them what needs to be done. While my team is doing the work, I manage the knowledge as well. People... Um, solve certain things for the first time it's a good idea to record or document it so that other people or other teams can use it um, creating status report which is across the knowledge areas i do it here change management for predictive processes think about a building can i change the entire third floor if i don't like it after 14 floor get completed no so how do we handle changes that also is one of the processes in the predictive processes here. And at some point of time, we close the entire project or the phase. Um, so that's the integration management knowledge area. This we spoke about. We spoke about knowledge areas. The What is knowledge area? The kind of work which we do. Um, so scope is a specific type of work. Schedule is another type of. So we, it's a category of the work or the processes which we execute. Um, PDCA is one of the ways to understand the overall processes, process group or knowledge areas. Um, PDCA is plan, do, check and act. We plan, 
we do we plan my team does the work and we keep on checking and acting this is how i'm gonna do i'm gonna make plan do check and act wheel um so sim similar thing is depicted here wherein i plan my team does the work input goes into the planning and i keep on monitoring and controlling monitoring and controlling being the umbrella process now it's going to give you an answer to this question as well a lot of people when they see the process chart they come out with questions like what are these numbers don't worry these numbers are 4.1 4.2 or 5.1 these numbers are just the reference number in the pm box guide wherein these are the chapter numbers and section numbers so don't worry about the numbers then the question next question which i hear a lot is um is there any sequence to the processes you know do i do execute these processes like this or the processes like this how do i execute the processes now the sequence the answer to this question lies in this particular chart again here so how is the sequence initiating happens together monitoring and controlling processes which are here these are the monitoring and controlling processes i do them periodically weekly monthly bi monthly whenever you write a status report um planning goes together and executing goes with the planning so executing inputs goes to planning back and at some part of time closing happens so let's see it again integration in each let's see it again so initiating happens together develop project charter and after that identifying stakeholders happens together and then planning starts so i start off writing all the plans but these plans are not the baseline plans or the plans which i do a sign off and say no changes in the plan the plans can change so i might create a high level plan at this point of time and then while my team start doing the work while my team start doing the work based on the productivity i change my plans so there could be a different version to the plan or the same plan get redefined or refined and every friday or saturday i write a status report so planning processes happens together executing are happening in parallel my team is doing the work in parallel i plan my team you do this particular task my team is doing that task in parallel um and i'm also doing the monitoring and controlling in parallel on fridays or weekends closing happens once i accept the project deliverables so um here somewhere there is a process called validate scope now if you look at the name of this process which knowledge area should it be part of um so here try and identify the knowledge area first validate scope should be part of which knowledge area scope management yeah, the name should give you some hint and validate is part of monitoring and controlling so um at some point of time when my team finishes the deliverable test the deliverable and customer accepts the deliverable then only i go ahead and close the project or phase i'm going to talk about deliverable journey and things like that in the next upcoming um, you know webcast so um, don't worry on that just understand the concept which is very very simple uh, today we are focusing on only on how the processes looks like so initiating i do some work planning i create all the plans in executing my team delivers the deliverable my team does the work and creates deliverable they also give me time sheets data so they fill up some software or they send me some email saying that this is the work i'm working on and in the monitoring and controlling which is like creating status report i check planned versus actual 
and gives that delta. So I might have a status report which shows a green color, we are on schedule. Or we show a red color, we are behind schedule. Or we show an amber color, we are behind schedule but under control. So you may have different kind of information which you put in the status report and certain actions which you do. You, we keep on doing that iteratively every week, every month till the customer finds the deliverable which are okay for him to accept. Once all the deliverable are accepted, we move into closing. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to give you how to go about identifying which process belongs to which knowledge area and which process group in the next segment which I'm going to publish later. So um, that's pretty much it. In case you have any questions, you can talk to me, you can write to me at kavita at kavitasharma.net or help at kavitasharma.net. If you want to be part of my classes, you can check the workshops at kavitasharma.net. I look forward for your inputs. Thank you and have a very nice day. Bye-bye.